Hey, how you going everybody? Welcome back to Hearns TV. It's me again, Dan, and I'm going to take you through one of, uh, I'm gonna take you through a model kit today that um, I think that you should really know about. Now, I have chosen this one for a very specific reason. And I would like to introduce to you from Great Wall Hobbies, the TB1 Devastator. And this particular kit is this particular kit is from the Battle of Midway in 1942. And it was at this particular battle that this plane, the Devastator, earned the title of the worst aircraft that the US Navy deployed during the Second World War. And I think that title is completely unfair. Now, let's go over that quickly for a second. I actually have one of a kit of a Devastator, and it's from Great War Hobbies as well. Uh, but the one that I have is from the... Uh, uh, Battle of Wake Island, where it was used as a uh, level bomber, a light level bomber, and at Midway it was a torpedo bomber, as you can see on the box. But the thing is, none of the devastators that attacked the Japanese fleet scored a hit, not a single one. And in fact, almost all of them were shot down even before they released their weapons. They were nearly 300 kilometers an hour slower than uh, the Japanese Zeros, the fighter planes at the time. But in its defense, you know, this plane was designed in 1935, entered service in 1937. Um, and in its day, it had quite, uh, quite a few uh, very innovative features. But by the time 1939 and then the Pacific Theater of Operation 1941 rolled around, it was quite obsolete. Um, and the mauling that it received at Midway was the only part of the Second World War where um, the, the, well, the parts it was involved in, where it had such devastating losses at Wake Island, it uh, was much, much better. But that's all in the past. So let's have a look at the kit itself, shall we? Now, once again, I always place a lot of value on presentation. And in this particular instance, the presentation is excellent. Um, very cool looking box. And uh, the uh, picture of the plane itself is uh, quite stunning. And here we have the canopy. Just quickly, I'll put this canopy, multiple pieces. Three crew members on the Devastator, um, rear gunner, pilot, and uh, navigator in the, the middle part. So segmented here. Now, the the um, the kit that I have at home of this, the one that's from the Battle of Wake Island, I actually haven't started building it yet, but I have opened the box to have um, a look at what's at the inside. And if there's one thing that I've noticed about the Great Wall Hobbies is the uh, attention to detail that they place on the aircraft itself. And here we have the fuselage of the plane. It's almost like a, a chubby little fish in a way with its tail. And it also, with as long with the torpedo, uh, for the torpedo attacks at uh, Midway, it's also included bombs. So you could uh, make the uh, level bomber version of the Devastator as well. A little bit of duality, which is uh, always good when you have the variety with your model kits. Now we're going to have a look at more. This here, I think this is the part where the, of the uh, underneath the pilot where the door opens up and there's a bomb site. And uh, that's how we took aim and uh, dropped, dropped the bombs on target when they were doing the uh, level flight. And now this is one, I wanted to pay some very close attention to this for, I'll just get these parts out of the way. The Devastator had quite thick wings. Now, if you've know, I don't, I'm not sure if the camera can sh uh, see, if you can see this or if the camera shows it, but on the wings here, there are raised panels, there like this. I can, 
running my finger over them there. Now that's actually true. The real Devastators did have that. And I was very impressed to see that feature was included um, in the kit actually. Uh, so much uh, authenticity in it. But one thing you will have to know that when, when after you've painted this and you're applying decals to the wing, you're going to need a fairly strong decal setter or decal adhesive uh, to, uh, to apply them because of the raised because of the raised parts on the surface of the wing area. And here, we have the propeller, the engine cowling, the engine, and on the torpedo itself. Another reason why the Devastator has a um, very unfair reputation is uh, when it was deployed it had the mark 13 torpedo which was notoriously unreliable there were many times where it was used in combat not just by the devastator but by other uh, aircraft where it scored direct hit and failed to detonate so it's not just the tradesmen sometimes it's the tools and here we have the landing gear another feature of the Devastator that um, was, I'm not sure if it was innovative at the time, but it's definitely part of what makes, I think, what makes this aircraft interesting. Um, as you can see on the front here, just in there, the wheels are still sticking out on the belly. It was semi-recessed. They didn't fully retract. And the reason for that was this thing is expected to go into combat. So there was a good chance it was going to get damaged. And in the event that it took damage and the hydraulic system on the landing gear could not be deployed, what it could do is jettison any uh, unused ordnance. And when it did a belly landing, the protruding wheels would actually take most of the impact and the underside of the aircraft would be relatively undamaged and you'd only really have to uh, replace the propeller. Very good feature, I think. And now, oh, don't forget, cover on the engine at the front. I want to have a look at the, dec uh, the, oh no, the decal and the instruction book. And here, the instructions, nicely colored, very nicely colored. And very um, vibrant instructions of how to, how to put it together. They're very easy to follow. Um, I really like that when it's not, and the nice glossy paper as well. Once again, the more little details that come with the kit um, add to add to the enjoyment of putting it together. And now we'll have a look at the paint schemes for. Lieutenant Commander John C. Walden of the USS Hornet. This was his, this was his plane, the one that he flew into combat and the colouring on the propeller and the nose. And this was another one from USS Hornet. Yes, I think that the Devastator is a very attractive plane. Um, one of the reasons for its poor uh, performance, as in it being slower than the fighters that were mauling it from the sky, is the engine that it was equipped with. The, um, the aircraft design itself uh, was quite good, but the engine it, it was equipped with was fairly underpowered. Um, by the time it had been deployed into combat, there were much more powerful engines uh, in circulation. but. Uh, they didn't want to update it now that the uh, the Avenger and um, the Helldiver were going to uh, coming into operational service, which phased out the Devastator and the Dauntless. It's dive bombing Comrade on the deck, and also I went photo etched pieces. Now these extra little details help make modeling a lot more fun. They can be quite finicky, 
uh, and delicate to deal with, but the, the alloys and things for the engine parts and the straps for the, for the crew in the cockpit, all of this stuff is excellent. It really adds to this kit. Um, Great Wall Hobbies is one, a company that I think has flown under the radar a little bit over the, over the years. Not too many people would uh, know about them, but recently they've brought, brought out some uh, brought out some stock to us that I'm very very impressed with actually. And uh, later on down the track, I'll probably do a little bit more. And of course, finally, the decals for the U.S. Navy that you add to the end result before you put it into your little uh, or potentially very big cabinet where you display all of your finished works. But yes, excellent. I really think you should take a close look at this kit uh, or this company in particular. Next time you're down at the model shop, there's um, they have quite a lot to offer. And um, yeah, I think you guys will really, really enjoy it. But um, I hope you're impressed with this as I am, and I hope you learned a little bit about the Devastator. And next time you're talking about aircraft from the Second World War, make sure you tell people it's really not as bad as history has judged it as being. Anyway, thanks for tuning in again, guys. I really enjoyed making this video and um, hope to see you in store very soon. And, and as always, rock and roll.